We are taught a lot of things in business that are absolutely unhelpful to our business growth. I know because I am in the business coaching industry and I was a victim of this myself. We're often told things like, you need to have a low ticket lead magnet. You need to have automated funnels. You need to be on multiple platforms at once to get as much of your content out there. And you need to have a diversified product suite to get to six figures. However, in this specific video, I'm gonna be talking about why none of those things are actually true and what you actually need in order to build a business that works. Not only that, I'm gonna be sharing with you the three simple things that you need to focus on. And if you don't focus on it, you're gonna find that your business journey just keeps going in cycles of not really producing revenue or results that you want and you're just going to feel frustrated. I'm Nicole, a business coach for women who want to create more income and impact in the world with less hustle. Now, I made my first six figures doing a lot of things that were just exhaustive and unaligned. And that was because I learned business from a lot of different people who primarily taught business in a very masculine way. And that is why I am on a mission to help you unlock more of a balanced approach to business that doesn't necessarily compromise the speed and the scale that you can take your business. But what it does is it protects your values, allows you to enjoy the entrepreneurial journey, and to experience freedom now instead of outsourcing the freedom to later or when you achieve certain goals. The common problem I see for so many entrepreneurs is that they are burnt out and exhausted while they are building their business. And that ultimately affects the quality of what they create and how quickly they can create it. Now, because I'm also a flow-based business coach, I teach a lot of things like flow science, rewiring your mindset, and shifting your identity so that you can unlock more wealth through accessing your internal worthiness. So keep watching if you are somebody who wants to create six figures in your business, but doesn't exactly know how, or perhaps you have taken lots of courses, programs, read lots of books, and listened to a ton of podcasts, and still are confused about what's actually necessary to get to six figures. The inspiration for this episode is actually a woman named Natalie Ellis. If you haven't heard of her, she is the CEO and founder of Boss Babe. She runs a massive business and the way she reached her first six figures is by actually selling one product. And that was a product that was only priced at $29. I share this with you because some of you are walking around telling yourselves that you need to sell a high ticket offer or that you need to have a complicated business model in order to reach six figures. And that is just not the truth. There are only three real moving parts of a successful business that to go from zero to six figures. And I'm going to teach you how today in this video. So keep watching. Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Nicole, a life and business coach for high functioning women. I'm a self-proclaimed foodie, content creator, educator, and your new abundance bestie. In my world, we talk about all things to do with elevating your life. I post weekly videos helping the everyday women embody her highest self, create inner wealth, master her mindset, unlock her femininity, and be an absolute boss in life. I create resources, trainings, and host experiences online and in person in order to help you reconnect to your true self, not the one you think you need to be, but the you that you were born to be. So you can reclaim your power and amplify your voice to lead, love, and create as a woman. If you like my vibe and you want a little bit more abundance in your life, hit subscribe to be notified whenever I drop a new episode and be sure to check out the free resources in the description below. So what are the three components that you need to create your first six figures in business? Number one, you need a product. You need a validated product that works and a product that has demand. Number two, you need positioning. You need to be a valued authority and a trusted one. And thirdly, you need a sales system or a sales engine. I'm going to dive into what each of these three components look like and what you can do today to clean up your business so that it is not so complicated and overwhelming and so that you can actually start making your way towards six figures without all the hustle and drama. Okay, so number one, your product. What is your signature product? This is the product that you become known for, that you run with and scale until it is running on its own. The signature product becomes the foundation for all of what you will build in your business and all the wealth that you will continue to create. Now, I understand it can be really hard to land on a specific single product, especially if you just haven't tested or tried many things out before, or if you have no proof that your product actually works. When I actually 
actually work with my clients on creating their first signature product, I remind them that it's okay to try, test, pivot, and keep going through that experimental process until they land on something that they absolutely love. The signature product should be something that falls within your flow zone or your zone of genius. And this is a combination of your skill set, your passions, something that you're willing to put your time and focus into. I dive actually deeper into what this is in my Business Without Hustle training, which is absolutely free and you can sign up for it now as well in the description below. But this signature product is what you want to start with and you want to stick to selling and building until you're able to scale it. The mistake that I see so many of you doing as new entrepreneurs is launching a whole bunch of different products that are not tested or validated and you have to work to create the product as well as build demand for the product and it just gets really messy. Not only that, it takes away so much of your time, energy and focus and it drains your creativity when you're trying to keep up with the tasks and things associated to maintaining and building a good product. I learned this the hard way because for the first four years in my business, although I was able to reach six figures, I did not do it selling one product. I sold multiple different products in which I always had to create new things for, new sales pages, new email sequences, new product deliverables, new marketing campaigns, content. I had to create demand my audience and I had to even find the audience to sell the offer to. What I was doing a lot of the time was launching a lot of things that I felt inspired to create. And often because I was so excited, I was just creating on the go. Rather than actually building a product that works and continuing to sell that, perfecting it, mastering it, getting lots of people through it and getting it validated and creating market demand audience and community that love the product that I have sold, that would have been a smarter and more efficient way to go. Now, my caveat is, again, you're not going to know right away what your signature product is. And for me, I guess that was the expensive lesson and the, and the time costly lesson that I had to learn. And so most entrepreneurs do go through this and it's not that it's a bad thing. It does teach you a lot about what you are good at, what you don't like, what you like, what people want from you and so on. So as long as you're willing to be okay with like a whole testing period for creating and finding the signature product you're going to land on, then that is okay too. That gets to be part of your business building journey. The good thing with me is that I eventually landed on a signature product and program, which I am now scaling and actually developing so much demand for. And it is the one thing that I'm being known for. Because you want to think of it like this. Every successful person that you can think of right now had a signature thing that they were known for to begin with. With Mel Robbins, maybe it was the five second rule. Jay Shetty, maybe it was his book, Think Like a Monk. Most people that we know today were known initially for one thing. And even when they pivoted or expanded later down the line, their credibility was built on one thing first. And they, they stuck to that one thing until they had enough consistency and community and demand around that thing. And then they went to expand to something else. Because I know one thing for sure, the amount of times I pivoted and launched new things, I essentially had to put so much effort and time and energy into creating new things that I basically could have had a multiple six figure business by the time at the point that I am now, I don't regret anything in my journey. I just learned from it. Now, there are two main things you want to keep in mind when you are thinking about this signature product. Number one is belief in that product. And number two, it's creating a validated product. I'm going to start with number two because we just spoke about that. A validated product is essentially a product that has been tried and tested and it works. You validate something by testing it, just like a scientific theory. You have a hypothesis, you have a problem, you have a hypothesis for a solution, test whether it works, and then you get feedback, and then you adjust, tweak, and do whatever you need to do, and then you retest it until it is foolproof and you know that it works. This is how you want to create every single product. And this is why when you're creating a signature product, you need to take it through a beta testing process especially if you've never sold it before or you don't have the skill. For example, you're selling a coaching program. Number one, you've never coached clients before. Number two, you don't have experience prior building a coaching program. And number three, you don't know if people actually get results in the container that you set. For example, one, one of my private clients is actually building a 12 week coaching program for the first time. And before selling it at the full price that he wants to sell it, we need to make sure that the product actually works. So his best guess, according to his own journey and what he believes he can coach people towards is a 12 week transformation period to get from point A to point B. Now he's going to test it by coaching X number of clients. And if X number of clients don't get that result in 12 weeks, he's got to either tweak the process or the way that he's coached them so that they arrive there by 12 weeks, 
or he's gonna tweak the container. And it's okay to make those changes along the way and while you're in that testing phase, because until you've figured out the secret recipe, you're going to need to allow that. Now, business services and offerings are essentially solutions. People are paying you for a solution or they're paying you for access to a result quicker. Now in the coaching space, you are essentially the person who's going to give them the transformation that's going to accelerate their access from this current reality to this reality. So in order to get them from here to there, we need to make sure that the process that we create for them actually works and that we validate it through getting people to go through that process over and over and over again. And that can take time, but it can also be accelerated by the development of your skills. So if you have really great coaching skill and perhaps you are, um, you're a wonderful coach, but you've never actually sold a coaching program because you have that underlying skill of coaching, you're going to be able to effectively get people through the process of transformation from he from A to B much quicker than let's say a coach who has never coached before, who is not just learning the skill of entrepreneurship and building a validated product, but is also learning and developing the skill of coaching, which maybe will also take them time and experience and hours of doing to learn. The second element, which is actually the first one that I talked about, is belief in the product. I cannot stress this enough. If you do not believe your product works, then you cannot possibly sell it. This is the rule of thumb in selling. You cannot sell something that you just simply don't believe works. And this is something that I hammer down on my clients on in all of my sales trainings, simply because people can read right through BS. Belief is cultivated through knowing the purpose of your product and knowing that your product is actually validated. So it kind of ties into that other one. You can find your right product when you believe you can find the product that is going to work for you and the product that is your signature when you operate out of trust and alignment to your essence, to your authentic self. Because although you might be really skilled and excellent at a certain thing, you are not going to deliver that thing as well as somebody who is called for that thing or purposed to do it. Now, I know it's kind of a deep question to tie this into your purpose, but I deeply believe this to be true because if you are doing something that you're just skilled at and excellent at, but aren't really connected to, you're just going to eventually fall out of love with it and your quality is gonna decline and somebody else who is purpose for it who is passionate about it will actually do it better than you. So you want to create out of alignment. And I actually have a tool that I help you do this on and it's finding your flow zone, the one that I mentioned earlier that is taught inside of my Business Without Hustle webinar that again, you can sign up for free if you are curious about learning that tool. I'm also gonna dive into the concept of Ikigai, which is a Japanese concept, which helps you identify your purpose and your career all in one framework. I'm gonna dive into that in the next part of this series where I'm actually taking each of these three components of the simple business to six figures framework and extracting and giving you more practical tools and tips for how to actually build that aspect of the framework. So make sure you subscribe or make sure you save the link to this playlist because I'm gonna be adding all the links to the video on this playlist. The last thing I wanna say about, about belief is that belief is also cultivated through an intention of service, which is contributing to the greater collective. Remember that your business journey is not here to fulfill your lack or scarcity or to meet your egoic needs of self-enhancement and validation. If you build your business from that place of needing your business results to validate you and prove to you that you're worthy and that you are somebody, then you're just building it from the wrong place and it's just going to be it's just going to destroy you from the inside out. When you believe that you as the entrepreneur are a person who is called to do something and you build your business from that place of purpose and connectedness to the whole, like to all the people in the world that you believe your purpose to serve, then what happens is you are willing to attempt big things. It is our human nature and our soul's quality to actually serve. And when we are in alignment to the energy of service in everything that we do, and we are thinking selflessly and not transactionally, we are able to create incredible things and people just want to pay us for it. Not only that, your intrinsic motivation to attempt big things will increase, your risk tolerance will increase because you are thinking of a cause that is greater than yourself and a cause that you are connected to. It's like being a martyr. You are willing to die for the cause. Maybe not so extreme, but you're willing to take extremes or go the distance for the people that you believe 
you're here to serve and when you believe that you are the person that carries a message that nobody else carries because of your experience your perspective your beliefs then that begins to shape how you build your business and the offerings that you produce all of that to summarize that your product your signature product has to be validated and it has to be one that you believe works that's the only way you're going to be able to sell it so now let's move on to part two. All right, so part two is positioning. Positioning is about establishing yourself as a trusted and valuable thought leader and presenting your offerings as a valuable solution to the people you're trying to help. So there are three main components in the positioning category. Number one, you need a platform or platforms to show up on. Number two, you need a community that trusts you. And number three, you also need traffic and visibility, which ultimately creates trust and demand for your offering. So first one, you need a platform to show up on. I always recommend to show up on one, the easiest, most resistance-free platform. However, you can choose to show up on two, one short form or one long form, but if it's too complicated to show up on just one that you can maintain consistently for a year, like period. Don't try to push it because I think that the ability to be patient on one platform and really curate your messaging, your voice and figure out your style will just be so much easier to scale on another platform or to expand on another platform more so if you have mastered it on one. So that's why I always think slow and steady is the better route. Keep it simple. And I will describe more about what the difference is between short form and long form and rich media and shelf content shelf life types of content to put out on these platforms and how to optimize in a way that's very simple and uncomplicated. I'm going to teach you my simple content frameworks in another series, but I also do touch on this inside my content fundamentals course. I teach everything you need to know about content, converting with content and creating content that works for your business and also doesn't feel really sleazy and icky whenever you're selling in my content fundamentals course, which you can get in the description below. There is also a discount code that you can apply just for you watching this YouTube video. So second, a community that you solve problems for. Most people think that content is transactional. It's about putting stuff out there and it's about taking, it's about asking people, convincing people to buy from you. No, that is not how I see it. Content, it's about value addition. It's about adding value to the piggy banks or the value banks of the people watching. Because the more value you add to people's lives, the more they will not only like you, but also trust you as an authority in that area. And you will be top of mind for them when they decide to buy or if they know somebody who's going to buy. It's really that simple. So instead of thinking of content or you're using your platform as a billboard or as an announcement channel or as a constant selling platform, make this one reframe and it's going to change everything for you in your marketing and in your results. And watch it. This will skyrocket your engagement, your community, your community trust, your value. It will skyrocket everything for you when you start creating from this place. And that is add value first. Always think about helping people. Think about what did you need to know back when you were in their shoes? How can you actually add helpful value to their lives today and not just be some content creator that is just making noise on the platform? When you consistently add value to people's lives, they will love you for it. And even if they don't pay you in dollars right away, they are ultimately paying their trust, their attention, their time, their emotions to you. And it will only be a matter of time till that becomes cash in your pocket. The third component is traffic and visibility. Demand is created through being visible to the right people consistently. So there are a few checkpoints to hit here. You need to be actually visible. You cannot be visible if you are only really showing up once every month because there are so many other people showing up consistently like every second day or every week. Whatever platform you're on, understand how that platform works and how to be visible on that platform. I used to think social media was so complicated until I thought of it like it was a math formula or a math equation. Now I hate math and I'm not great at it, but what I do know for sure is that formulas are simple. One plus one equals two and it will always equal two. If you plus one and another one, you will always get two. 
too. It's really that simple. It's exactly the same with social media. If you understand how that algorithm works, how to be pushed out on the algorithm, how to be banned on the algorithm, what are the do's and don'ts, and you learn to play its game, then you infuse your creativity and your personality. And that is the perfect formula for you to always be seen by the people that you want to be seen by. So learn the platform you are on and learn to play its game. So then by being visible and consistent on the platform and consistent is a whole conversation, which I'm not going to get to today. We're going to talk about that in the video dedicated specifically to this topic. You can check that out in the playlist as well. It will be there in a separate video. When you are visible, you create demand simply because you are repeatedly exposing your customer to you, your brand and your offering. The more your customer sees your brand, your offering or your face or things to do with your brand, the more they will be familiar with you. And it's that rule of thumb. You need at least seven or even I think seven is the number. I'm not sure. Maybe it's 14. I don't know, but you need a certain number of times of repeated exposure to your customer before you even become a top of mind choice for them. And then the other part of this is that it's not just being visible, it's about being valuable. One of my clients was telling me it took her so long to create this content piece, which ended up being a really valuable content piece. And what we found that it was that it took so long because one, she wasn't used to creating highly valuable content pieces. And number two, because that style was quite new to her. Over time, she started creating content like this and the value addition that she was adding to her audience was so high and they were so surprised by it because she never added so much value to her content before that not only did her engagement skyrocket, but so did her sales. When you are visible, it's also about being valuable. And sometimes valuable content really is going to come down to putting in the effort in the quality of your content. So don't just think create content and post it. Think what are the contents of the content? Are they highly valuable? Will they genuinely help someone? And you can also be valuable through being a relatable person, sharing your experiences and struggles and relating to people. You can be valuable through adding educational content and knowledge into the world through the lens of your expertise and through being aspirational, somebody that people can aspire to be like and showing people how you think and how you maybe have solutions that they don't. These are some of the ways that you can be valuable. Remember creating demand for your offers, not rocket science. Anything that you have desire and demand for, think of it like a luxury bag or a certain car or a certain, certain result, a certain thing, any product that you have desire and demand for is something that you desire because somebody took the time to speak your language and to relate to your desires and pain points and to learn how to communicate that to you. Over time, through repeated exposure, your demand for it increased. And the more people you sold with that thing, the more that you were sold the message that you will be happier, peaceful, prettier, whatever, the more you believe that you needed that thing. That's as simple as marketing gets. So reverse engineer that process and try it out for your business. Okay, so now you have the first two parts of what you need in your simple business model in order to get to your first six figures. The third part is a sales engine, a seamless, sales system where it simply just makes sense for your client to buy or in my words, creating a no brainer. Yes. A sales system is really just the conversion process that you take your leads or ideal clients through. And it's an intentionally curated process or journey that meets them at every part of the customer's buying decision process. What many of you are doing, and I did this too for the first few years of my business, is creating lots of products and then creating lots of marketing content, doing all the things on social media, but you are not building a seamless and foolproof sales system. And this is why so many of you might have demand for your offering through marketing. And maybe you actually have so many offers, like a huge product suite. But what you're realizing is that there are not many people who are following through and converting. You might be increasing your follower account or your engagement metrics. You might even have more and more products under your belt, more freebies, more lead magnets. But unless you have a sales system that is built to work and a sales engine that actually takes people from point A to point B in the customer journey without much of your active effort, then it is not going to lead to cash flow. You're going to have lots of community growth. You're going to have audience growth and all the other growth except for cash flow and revenue. So this is the one mistake you want to avoid making. This is actually a mistake that I made 
for many years because I think I was low-key avoidant of dealing with money. And even though I was creating money, I was not able to retain the consistent revenue. I had very high months, very low months, and I had just a lot of sporadic income in my business rather than learning to actually maintain it and make it recurring. The only way that I could really do that was through building a sales engine, just like an engine in a car. You get it to work by adding fuel to the engine and then the engine just does everything else for you. So your sales engine might take some time and effort to build at first, but with intention, with focus, you will build it. And once you build it, you only need to do it once, maybe tweak it in the future to make sure it still works. But for the most part, it is an engine. As long as there are leads funneling through it, it will convert. That's what you want for your sales engine. Now, how do you actually build one? The easiest way that I teach my clients is to simply map out the customer's buying journey. You wanna think about the stages that your customer will go through when they're evaluating to buy from you. For the most part, this is gonna look very similar for every single business model. However, depending on your business, you might wanna get even more specific about the stages that they go through. So for example, I have a digital education business slash coaching business. What that means is when clients want to sign up for me for one of my offerings, which is let's say a one-on-one -on -one six month program, they're gonna to need to go through the process of engaging with my content or the value that I put out in the world and then potentially opting into a freebie. And then from that freebie, perhaps receiving a sequence of nurturing emails that build trust and likability with me, but also expose my product. Then they might opt in to a free consultation call or a clarity call. That clarity call is designed to help them get to know me, help me get to know them, and for me to add value. And then from there, it's an opportunity as well to transition to a sales call or a sales pitch, where if they are interested and if it's the right offer for them, I invite them to work with me for six months. This is not something that I do for every single client because obviously I only have a certain number of spots to work with clients for six months at a time, also at the one-on-one -on -one highest private VIP level. However, that's why the sales process is so intentional because it is something that I don't want to just be taking anyone on. I need somebody who is actually an ideal fit, who I can actually work with, who is willing to put in the work and the price is also a qualifier as well, meaning it is priced at high ticket, meaning it's not going to be for everybody as well. However, I do have other offerings in my product suite that are a bit mid-range and low range. And that means that other people can buy from me. However, the process for buying those offers are gonna look very different because the customer buyer journey is going to be very different. They might not need a whole as 45 minute consultation or a landing page if they're gonna buy a $7 thing or sign up for a free ebook. Maybe all they need is a landing page with a description and a sign up button. This is how you want to think about it. When you look at the customer journey, you want to think about what are the thoughts they are having at every single part of the process, knowing that there's part of the process where they are simply just becoming aware of you. Think of it like dating. They're just aware. They're just meeting you for the first time. And then there's a part of the process where maybe they're trying to see if you could help them because maybe some of your content resonates with them and then they're maybe opting in but they're not fully committed yet what are their thoughts then what are their thoughts about the product you're selling maybe they have hesitations about it address that at that point in the journey and then maybe when they're about to buy what are the thoughts that they're having then what are the hesitations that are holding them back from being a hell yes and meet those objections address those concerns in the way you're showing up for them in that funnel. That is what we call a simple customer journey or a simple sales funnel and building the components around that. I don't really wanna get into in this video because it's a whole as thing. I have an entire module for it in my programs where I teach sales and conversions. However, the simple thing that you need to know here is that you simply just have to think about the customer and the journey they're on and think in their shoes and then meet them there. It's kind of like getting so in their mind that they feel like in their sales journey, you can read everything that's going on in their brain. Like you are already one step ahead and you've answered the question before they've even thought it. That is how you make a seamless sales process and how you get them to a no brainer, yes. And the final thought that I wanna add about this sales engine is that you want it to be automated. I made the mistake in my business of basically making everything in the sales process manual. I was doing a lot of organic nurturing, meaning not that 
you have to pay for it, that that's compulsory. But I was doing a lot of things myself. So for example, there was a time where I was in the DMs generating leads, so messaging people, which I don't do now, I don't teach that now, but I used to. Um, and that used to be the method that I was taught to have connections and touch points with people. And then when people were expressing interest, I was in each and every one of these DMs every single day responding to them in real time. And I was also responding to my emails. And I was also like just doing everything from scratch. And I also, if they wanted to book a consult or call with me, I would be manually booking them into my calendar and sending them links. Nowadays, I have Calendly, a scheduling system for that. I have a landing page. I have automated funnels and email nurtures that go out at when customers are tagged on certain things or when they opt into certain products. So there are many things and there are also tools like ManyChat or um, VAs that you can also hire to help you with streamlining and automating that process. Because again, a sales engine should be seamless. It should be simple. It should run on its own without you needing to intervene. Because once you build it, you might need to just test it a few more times to make sure it actually converts. And you're going to test it through taking more and more people through it and observing your data like how high is your conversion rate if you're getting 10 consults booked in are you converting all of them or are you converting 50 percent of them because that's going to tell you where to look in the sales funnel in the sales nurturing process to know where to hit a little bit harder or where to tweak the strategy so more on that in this specific video related to this topic. However, as a whole, just remember that it's really the simpler and the mo more streamlined and automated you can make it, the easier it's gonna be for you to focus your creativity and energy in the areas that matter most, which is gonna be creating an amazing offer, delivering that amazing offer over and over again, especially if it's a live delivery, like a coaching program. And more importantly, reserving your creativity for marketing and showing up in a way that's authentic, powerful, and true to the message that you want to convey. So there you have it, the only three things you need in order to make your first six figures in business. There are gonna be a lot of skills and tools and resources that you get on your entrepreneurial journey. People are gonna tell you, you need this, you need that, and they're just gonna be pushing all the things to you, but that's just gonna create more confusion, overwhelm, and hustle for you if you don't get this. So three simple things, ask yourself, does my business have these three things? Are they well built? Are they solid? Am I working on them? And then go and make six figures. The one thing that I want to end on is that this advice is really for somebody who wants to make their first six figures or wants to retain or maintain that consistent six figures. Now there is a different set of advice that I would be giving you if you were scaling from six figures to recurring six figures to then maybe making beyond that because that is a whole different process. So if you are watching this and you're thinking, yeah, this was so helpful. This made it so simple. Rewatch this video, take some notes and go and implement. And comment below if this helped you or if you have any follow-up questions as well on any of these three points. Like I mentioned, I do have a free training called Business Without Hustle where I break down the simple components that are needed to build a business that effortlessly creates income and impacts without you needing to trade out what you value. So many of us are so busy doing too much and complicating our businesses that we're not able to really access the freedom that we have built our businesses for. We reserve the access to peace, joy, freedom and protecting our values for later like a later circumstance when we make more money or when we attain a certain goal but the reality is that is never a sustainable or fulfilling way to build your business from so learn the business without hustle process and sign up for my free workshop now i'll see you in my next video bye if you want to take your abundance to another level i want to help you I'm a life and business coach for women who want to step into their next level by activating wealth from the inside out. To help you take your first step to unlocking true abundance and your aligned potential, I'm giving you free resources, workshops, and masterclasses that you can access on demand right now. Check out www.nicoleconception.co slash free dash resources to get your hands on it. For more videos like this, check out the other playlists and series I have on this channel. And don't forget to hit subscribe to be notified whenever I drop a new video. And if you're more of the podcast type, check out Freedom in Flow, where I dive even deeper into the concepts that will help you create less hustle and more flow, abundance and alignment in your life and business. Now, if you're a reader, you'll want to subscribe to my email list for unfiltered, honest and most importantly, applicable life upgrades. 
Now, don't be a stranger. Connect with me on Instagram and TikTok and send me a message. I love getting to know you and your story. It's why I do this. Okay, my lovely, that's all for now. I'll see you soon. Signing off, Nicole.